Welcome to a special edition of 805 Sports Talk. It's just me and Lorenzo today, uh, but we're going to be breaking down the CIF playoffs for the Central Coast. And Tuesday night, we saw two boys basketball teams advance with Santa Maria winning at Garden Grove and Lompoc also advancing on the road. Um, I don't think a lot of people would have thought Santa Maria and Lompoc would be the last two boys basketball teams standing, but here we are. First, we'll talk about Santa Maria's win at Garden Grove. The Saints were playing at top seeded Garden Grove. The Argonauts on a 22 game win streak and the Saints came away with a 60 to 53 victory. The story really was Blake Truett playing through flu like symptoms, uh, scored 18 points, grabbed nine rebounds in that victory on the road. Big win for the Saints. Joey Navarez, who has done a tremendous job leading that Santa Maria offense, scoring 31 points in each of the first two playoff games. He added 24 points for the Saints Tuesday night. John Ramos, uh, another one of those football players who, who's added a lot to this basketball team, just like Blake Truett. He had 10 points and 10 rebounds. Ramos has really added a strength and, and physical element to that Santa Maria basketball team, and he's, he's done a good job inside as Ramos is really the only player above six feet on that team. So he had a big game Tuesday night, and the Saints are advancing. They're playing at La Puente. Friday night on the road, so the back-to-back -back road games in the playoffs. That's a semi-final game. We'll have coverage on that one, and, and that's kind of a reason why you, you see only me and Lorenzo here today. Uh, Kenny's out covering Dun Dunn soccer, and then Ellie is on the road covering the uh, Rigetti girls basketball game at Fontana Summit. Um, so we'll have coverage on that. Mm -hmm. We're sticking to the boys' basketball um, season. Um, Lorenzo. You know, you, you've seen Santa Maria play, you've seen Lompoc right. play. Um, did you think you'd see those two teams, the last one standing here? Never. And, you know, I want to go to Santa Maria. I mean, just it seems like that when we're done um, covering a CIF run, then comes another one. I mean, it's been that way since baseball and did it continue with football. And now you got David Mahdi and his crew just doing a tremendous job on the hardwood. And I mean, I know we're at that point where we're trying to figure out our all area stuff. Well, I mean, it's official. Santa Maria is in that conversation with what David Mahdi has done with that basketball program, especially a senior heavy one. And then Blake Tripp with his Jordan like flu game last night going against a team that was red hot in Garden Grove. But you know, just such a fascinating story that I've seen out of Santa Maria in the brief time that I managed to cover them. And crazy thing too, and the thing that we have to remember about both of these teams is that they're not going to have a Division One college basketball prospect. And that's what's crazy. But you know, just really a bunch of guys who take on what I what I believe is the mindset of their city. I mean. In Santa Maria, it's this whole like scrapper, uh, never back down. Uh, I come from a small surrounding, but I'm gonna fight for everything. That attitude, and you know, I sense the same thing out of Lompoc High with the job that Paul Taronis has done with his guys as well. Yeah, and, and these two teams have had some battles throughout the regular season. I think Santa Maria won their first one in double overtime, triple overtime, triple uh, overtime. during the tournament during their tournament. And then they had two really good league games as well that the two teams played. I think Lompoc took both of those. So, um, you know, they've had some battles that kind of got them ready for, for these playoff runs. And I remember the first night of the boys basketball playoffs with Cabrillo losing, St. Joseph losing, Pioneer Valley losing. We were kind of, you know, like, oh, man, we don't know how this is going to shake out. It's going to be a little difficult to make our all area selections with so many teams losing. We won't have you know, that, that long playoff run that can kind of, you know, separate the, the top player in the area who, who kind of leads his team to, to, you know, a deep playoff run. We weren't sure we were going to have that, but here we are, two teams making playoff runs in Lompoc and Santa Maria. Um, I, I got to give Lompoc a lot of credit for going on that, you know, long road trip, you know, kind of overlooked throughout the league season. Not, not too much hype around them. Paul Tarone is in his first season leading that team. They go all the way down toward Indio, you know, way out there. Our, our teams usually don't have a lot of success traveling down there, but they, you know, pour, pour, put up 93 points on the road, come away with the 10 point victory, and it was tight there at the end. Um, what do you want to say about Tarone is, you know, kind of being a younger coach in a tough spot on the road in a tight game, and mm -hmm. he, he pulls all the right strings to help his team out to, to a victory. Here's what's crazy about Tarone is, I mean, he, for the longest time, grew up in a football first family, and it wasn't until he met Claudia Tarone when he started to get more and more immersed on the basketball end, but 
you know, that extra time with, with Claudia clearly has helped. And I want to mention this as part of Lompoc's gauntlet. And this is something that Tyrone is also cites as one of the main reasons why Lompoc's gone on this run. They had to deal with Arroyo Grande, Pioneer Valley, Central High in Fresno, which made a state run last year on the hardwood. San Luis Obispo, which is also making a run as well. Lompoc survived that gauntlet right there. And that really, Toronto believes, that really prepared them for what they're doing right now. And we mentioned Santa Maria. They actually won two games against the Saints. 64 to 44 on January the 4th. Also a, a very close 62 to 59 victory on January the 29th. And now I, I can add this, Aquinas and Desert Hot Springs were two teams ranked into the same division that Lompoc is in. And the Braves beat both of them. So now I tend to wonder, did Lompoc already solidify a state berth considering the fact that there's these two victories against those ranked teams? Yeah, they will be eligible for the state playoffs by making the semifinals, even if they do lose uh, Friday night. Lompoc will be at home, so you know a little advantage playing at home. But Santa Maria's on the road at La Puente. La Puente beat Malibu 83-76 in overtime. Uh, I think that one might be a toss-up. You know, I think we've kind of learned never to to count out the Saints, especially with Blake Truitt on that team, John Ramos on that team. So, you know, who knows what's going to happen? We'll have some coverage from both of those mm -hmm. games Friday as well. But a uh, shout out to Jordan Tyler. We weren't sure how it would work out for him moving away from Cabrillo, going to Lompoc. Things didn't work out at Cabrillo. Uh, we kind of thought, you know, maybe Cabrillo would have the longer postseason run, but here. The Braves are with Jordan Tyler, the you know still standing. Cabrillo mm -hmm. got knocked out in the first round at home against a really good AG team, but it's good to see that Tyler was able to kind of work things out, and, and he's still playing. So it's good to see that things worked out for him. But you know Andrew V is a guy that we haven't mentioned a lot. He's he's been leading that team, scoring 21 points. I think Ruben Cortez, known as a football player, he's he's kind of added something to that team as well. So has Ryan Morgan, and that's kind of a trend you see between Lompoc and Santa Maria. They do have those two sport athletes, football players and basketball basketball players out on that team maybe that's maybe that kind of adds a little physicality or some type of dimension for these teams well it does I mean and Toronto is a football guy and he has uh, guys who played football for him on that roster but in regards to Tyler he really stepped up defensively against Aquinas there's those three huge blocks especially that crucial one that clearly like kept the momentum on Lompoc's side Via definitely is a contender for all area MVP I mean night in night out even though like Lompoc's kind of spread out on the scoring end Villa has really provided that, that top sharp shooting presence for Tyrone's. Ryan Morgan is a star to making as well. And we already saw what older sister Danielle was able to do for four years at Lompoc High. I also want to mention a guy they like to call Beans, Benicio K. Yeah, I mean, I hope I got that last name right. But they call him, yeah, they, they call him Beans, though. But <laughs> he's been a really, really valuable six man for Tyrone's. And, when I was talking to Paul on the phone, he let it be known that Beans really bailed out Lompoc in that game. There's no way that if it weren't for his presence off of the bench that Lompoc would have would have actually lost this game down in the desert. But, you know, they love they love their beans down there. So <laughs> Yeah, we, we mentioned Paul Toronto's over there at Lompoc, but I think we'd be remiss if we don't mention Dave Yamati over there at Santa Maria. Uh, couldn't happen to a better guy. He he's happy to be in the semifinals, but I'm sure they're, you know, intent on making that championship game they're happy to be there but you know they they want to keep advancing they would love a state playoff berth but i'm sure they would like to, to play in a championship game even more uh, we're going to move over to girls basketball we'll stay in the lompoc valley um you know with cabrillo advancing we kind of expected them to advance to the quarterfinals we expected rigetti to be here as well we didn't expect those two boys basketball teams to still be alive at this point but th this was kind of expected to be right. in the quarterfinals especially rigetti cabrillo's kind of had to deal with some injury bugs but they're they're kind of settled things on we we're going to see if they can advance to the semifinals against san clemente while you're watching this they'll probably be playing already um what what do you think about this quarterfinal run is it expected and do you expect them to move on to the semifinals? You know, I expected this quarterfinal run because, you know, it seemed to be their rallying cry how they would reach the quarterfinals, but then they would just uh, completely fall apart from there. But one of the things that Jeremy Kuhn mentioned that really, um, really struck with me was he believes his team has improved from an IQ standpoint. And here's the reason why his own players now immediately identify what defensive schemes are out on the floor and they make their own adjustments so there's an advantage of 
of a Jared McCune led team and then big X factor lately has been Amani Childress I mean when she gets going on the three point end it just makes Cabrillo even more dangerous especially off of the bench and you know Childress is the antithesis of selfish I mean her being a senior she unfortunately doesn't start in, instead they go with uh, two sophomores as part of their front five but you know Childress doesn't really wallow in self pity she just she lets me know that, you know, I'm still going to find a way to, to contribute to this team. And she did in the opening playoff game. And she's been she's been really valuable when Cabrillo needs a three-point shooter. So I would imagine that she would play a pretty significant role in this game against San Clemente. And we had some high expectations for these teams. But I think they've surpassed even those, uh, even those expectations that we had. Uh, I don't know how long Rigetti's win streak is now. Over 20 games, they're, they're just one loss on the season. Uh, Cabrillo's riding an 18-game win streak, just two losses on the season. And both their last <laughs> loss was to Rigetti. <laughs> yeah, and they both beat each other to start the season. Uh, I think Rigetti's first game was against Cabrillo. We had all that madness with the, the schedules being changed because of the Thomas fire, all that stuff. So they kind of scrambled to, to come up with games. Rigetti beat Cabrillo later on in the season. So, so they know each other very well. And I think they're also similar teams as well. You look at those top players that they have. Uh, Aaron Jenkins over there at Cabrillo, Zane Shecker's kind of the top player over there at Rigetti. They have those post presence, those kind of gritty players. Amani Childress over at Cabrillo, Ashley Reynoso over there at Rigetti. They also have some young players. Mercedes Arredondo is a really good young guard for Rigetti. Jesse Jenkins, Alexa McCune is one of those younger players that Cabrillo has. So I think they have a lot of similarities between them. Mm -hmm. um, and they did meet in the quarterfinals two years ago. That was a fun game to cover. Um, so they're both in the quarterfinals again this year. Um, you know, the, the Conks haven't been able to get past that quarterfinal hurdle. We'll see if they can do it against San Clemente this week um, and, and advance. They'll play possibly at home Saturday. Uh, I think Rigetti would also be able to play at home Saturday as well if they both advance. Rigetti's had a little more playoff success making the semifinals the last two years. Cabrillo, on the other hand, hasn't quite got there, but um, I kind of feel like this could be their year. They're playing tonight, so we'll, we'll have full coverage on that game full coverage on Rigetti's game and then of course we'll cover them in the semifinals as well but it's been a, a, mm -hmm. a lot of fun to see both these teams fight through those high expectations and, and make it to the quarterfinals but I think you know we still expect some something more out of them to I, I think we would both kind of mm -hmm. at this point expect them to be in the in the semifinals and, and I know Jared McCune over there at Cabrillo he really wants that semifinal berth and, and possibly more and you not know, only that Erin Jacobs I mean she's been there this is her fourth and final mm -hmm. year this is her last go around so and I mean, truthfully, I feel like that Cabrillo and Rigetti playing against each other was the best thing to happen to them, clearly, because, I mean, they got the better end of one another and they, they made it this far. Yeah, and Rigetti made the state playoffs last year. I know before the season even started, you talked to McCune, and he was already thinking about state playoffs. So one more win, and, and that's, a, I think, a definite possibility. I don't see how you can leave a team that's 23-2 and two on the season you know, if, the, if they make the semifinals out of those state playoffs. I think they'll be there as well. I think... Rigetti should, should be a lock for those state playoffs if they both advance to the semifinals. Um, Elliot Stern is over there in Fontana. Wednesday night we'll have coverage on that in Thursday Santa Maria Times and we'll continue to cover all these teams throughout the postseason. Uh, we're going to switch it up a little bit to boxing. Um, you know, we've been following Carlos Balderas ever since his 2016 Olympic debut and he had his fourth pro bout Saturday night fighting in El Paso, Texas and it was his longest professional fight of his career four rounds all his other three uh, pro bouts went just one round with first round KOs for Balderas and uh, it was kind of a mixed performance uh, drew some criticism from from the commentators Robert Guerrero uh, was kind of critical of him and um, you know, he really had to earn that win. Uh, Jorge Rojas, kind of a, a seasoned fighter, six years older than him, had about a three inch reach advantage, kind of really made Balderas win that fight, earn that fight, go all four rounds, took, took a beating, and uh, Rojas really kind of almost took that fourth round. So it was good to see Balderas get some more action in, kind of get over that hurdle where you're always looking for that KO, because he had four or three KOs in his first three fights. So he had to kind of grind out a win. I think that could be good for his career moving forward you know you're not going to be always be looking for that knockout you get some some rounds under your belt so i think this is a good thing in the long run for balderas we'll see where he fights next um before this fight he was kind of talking about fighting at the Shumas casino maybe that fight will happen at some point um i'm sure we'll see him on tv again as his promoter was able to kind of book that on fox and network television so he made his network television debut 
won his fourth fight in a row and, and really had to earn that one. So I think it was a, a good night all in all, even though he didn't get the knockout. Um, you keep that streak going, but it, it was good for him to kind of get, get some rounds under his belt and keep that going. And then looking at the soccer playoffs, we have Dunn playing Wednesday, Lompoc playing as well. We'll have coverage on how they do, so we got to give them a shout out. Um, San Diego's girls soccer team lost to Montclair on Tuesday. Um, they were up 1-0 and then Montclair scored two late goals. That was the second round in the girls' soccer playoffs. So um, we'll have coverage on Lompoc and Dunn on the boys' mm -hmm. side. And another thing too, Lompoc is going against Indian Springs, a state champ from one year ago. So there's a huge gauntlet that the Braves are trying to go through. Yeah, so spring sports are, are trying to, you know, creep in and start up and heat up, but uh, we still got a lot of winter sport playoff action. So check us out on Twitter, on Facebook, and of course, SantaMariaTimes.com, LompocRecord.com to see all our coverage. We've got a lot of playoff coverage planned for you guys for the rest of this week, and we'll see you guys next week on 805 Sports Talk.